Welcome back to the Reclaiming Me podcast. As always, I'm your host, Valerie Schrader. And today's episode, we're going to dive into how our inner child can be affecting our health. I'm talking about our physical health, illness, injury, all that stuff, and how that can play into sabotaging us. So let's dive into this topic. Um, And it's funny because I've done multiple client sessions in the last few weeks where this has come up. But I have seen in my own family, in my personal life, some really, really profound things out of working through this. Uh, I'm going to get to that story in a little bit. So I also just did an interview for another podcast on this. So it is fresh, right? We are talking about something that I've been talking about for a couple weeks and I talk about it all the time. I've talked about it many times in my career with people. When we are holding certain patterns, wounds, beliefs, stories, whatever you want to call it, that have been impacting us since childhood, there is a point where our physical body tends to suffer. Uh, We develop health issues, we are more susceptible to injury, And it's not just because our autoimmune system is being affected by this, but also because, again, we are just not in a good place. We are not as alert, as aligned as we could be. So things happen. Or we're taking actions based on the wound, and it leads us to hurting ourselves. I am a perfect example of that because... When I owned my studio, I was always overdoing everything due to feeling like I needed to, to be enough, and I worked myself to the point of injuries that affected my spine. I've dealt with tons of other illnesses. I dealt with cervical cancer. Um, And I've seen this happen with a lot of clients where they will come to me because they're having a specific issue going on in their life and they want some help with that. They want to see some improvement. They're recognizing a pattern that keeps coming up for them, right? Whether it be like any time they start to make some progress in their relationships or career, something always goes wrong and it goes to shit. Or they are working in a business or they're trying to build one and every time they try to go and build a business, right, nothing works out for them. Um, they keep getting into the relationships that are the same. Every time they, everything in their life starts to get better, something goes wrong and the pattern repeats over and over and over again. If you know what I'm talking about, uh, let me know <laughs> in, in the comments and all that good stuff. So... This happens all the time, right? And every time they come to me about that, I always follow up with, what's your health like? Or they'll just start telling me about it. And typically there's some type of prolonged injury, illness, like autoimmune issue. Something is going on. And again, it doesn't have to just be autoimmune related. But something is going on that's also impacting their health. And in my mind, right, because I've been doing this work for so long, I'm like, ooh, I bet that is attached to an inner child. I bet it is. And it's usually a form of protection or, you know, again, there's been so much held in the body emotionally that it's starting to impact our health. So first I want to address... How does that happen? Like, and why does this happen? Because it makes sense to me, but it's not going to make sense to everybody. And even if you have kind of an understanding, I want to give you a deeper one. So when we are in states of stress for a prolonged period, it raises the cortisol levels in our body. It affects our immune system. And when we're holding those stress hormones in our body and there's no actual release from it, right? Our biological reactions are meant to be crying, shaking, screaming, doing something to get it all out, right? If you look at um, a freaking gazelle in like a National Geographic video or some kind of National Geographic video, right? When a gazelle is out there in the wild, it's doing its thing, right? And then the brain 
sends a message down to the body after the body gets the spidey senses going of like, hey, I think there's a lion around here. Um, and the brain sends the message of like, we should fucking run. Like right now, we should run. This is no longer safe. Um, they run, right? And if they escape the attack, you will see often in these videos, the gazelle like do this little shake of its body and it goes on about its day, right? It starts eating again, whatever. But it does that little shake first. So all day long, every day, every second, every nanosecond of the day, your body and brain are communicating together through the vagus nerve. It's this big nerve that runs from the brain all the way through your major organs. And it is constantly sending information up from those organs, letting it know, hey, this is what's up. And the brain is like, okay, got it. Here's how we should react. But when we are constantly in stress cycles, we don't react well. And all of that stuff is set in our body. When we cry, we are releasing stress hormones. But if we don't give ourselves the ability to cry and to be soothed and or scream it out when we are angry, all those feelings that naturally come up when we're a child and, you know, we're feeling our feelings, right? And if we're not given permission to do that, it's constantly holding stress hormones. And if you constantly have to be on alert, if you constantly have to be um, hyper vigilant, if you are constantly like in overdrive because you're trying to perform to be loved, if you're constantly on edge waiting to be criticized or whatever, that is leaving your body susceptible to illness because there is a constant battle with stress hormones going on, right? And over time, because all of this stuff is living in your body in a cellular level, the body starts to deteriorate. So maybe it is autoimmune related, or maybe again, because this is going on, you're not making decisions from rational, calm, relaxed places. So that was for me. Every injury that I received while I was teaching was due to me not being able to make rational, calm decisions because I'm in this constant state of anxiety and stress due to all of these patterns and wounds from childhood, right? Those beliefs of like, I am not enough. So it's constantly going on and it's affecting me and it's affecting my clients. So like I have a lot of clients that have, again, autoimmune diseases. I have a lot of clients that have spinal issues or back pain issues, gut issues. Um, they've had some pretty major injuries and it, and it is linked to those decisions that were not made from good places. All this is going on in the body. So here's a really cool thing about this. And I'm not saying it's cool to have all these injuries and issues going on, but here's what I'm going to say to this. This is where we can use the body to do some healing. And not only can you impact the emotional and mental health of the body, but you can actually impact the physical health of the body. And this is what I've seen time and time again with my clients, because a lot of times these inner child's that are sitting in there and a need was not met and a story was developed, they're just trying to protect you. So what you'll also see is not just these issues coming up because the body has been holding stress for a long time, but what you're also going to see is these issues coming up anytime you're trying to succeed. My thing was always like really bad migraines or sinus headaches too. I would get them anytime I was trying to go like do an event or maybe I had been doing a bunch of speaking events. I'd been doing some networking stuff, doing a bunch of client sessions, whatever. I was making some type of progress in my business and then the next day I would be out for the count with a headache. Um, and what I recognized within myself was the same thing I recognized in my clients. This was a form of protection. So when we have these things popping up, um, like I have clients that have a lot of gut issues and gut issues are pretty common with people with childhood trauma. Um, I have that if you've been listening for any time, you know I have been diagnosed with CPTSD. I am actually clear from that. And that means like I am no longer presenting with the harsh symptoms of that. Like I deal with some after effects, absolutely. And I deal with anxiety 
but it is no longer a, an effect in my life that is inhibiting me, which is huge. Like for those of you that have gone through mental illness and CPTSD, PTSD, like you know how big it is for a, your own doctor to tell you something like that. If you're not there yet, no judgment. You'll get there. I promise you will. And keep working for it because you deserve that. But anyway, this uh, our immune system gets affected and, you know, it goes back to all those stress hormones and, and the way our body is affected in how it is holding on to things and all, how we're also operating throughout our day. But what I see happen is those gut issues will pop up anytime like there isn't an idea to move forward or like body pain. Like um, I have a couple clients also that have like really, really bad back pain, like to the point that they've had surgeries and things like that, um, spinal surgeries. And it pops up, all of that excruciating pain starts popping up again Anytime they're making career progress, anytime they're making relationship progress or business progress, anytime their life seems to be getting better and everything seems to be going well. And what I always tell them is, is like, okay, so what is this trying to protect you from? Because it's really frustrating and it's really infuriating too for those of us that have experienced this because you want to move forward. You want to be able to live the life that you want to live on the terms that you want to live it, whether that is in your romantic relationships, friendships, um, going out and enjoying life, traveling the world, um, having a business, having a career success, having body success, right? Like having a better body image. That's what I mean by body success. Like getting to that place where you feel really good in your body. Maybe like there's things you want to go out and try and do whatever it is. You deserve to have all that. But there is a part of you, when these things pop up, every time you seem to be getting ahead, that's saying, uh-uh, we're not doing this. This is not safe. I don't want you to get hurt. And the hurt is whatever happened to create the story that it wasn't safe, right? So to give you my example for that, like I said, I grew up with this really, really harsh belief that I was not good enough. Um, I was bad and it all stems from moments with my mother in a very particular moment where my mom blamed me for um, having been sexually harmed as a child. Um, for those of you that have been through that, I'm sending you my love but it created this belief that I was somehow inherently bad and at fault for those things and I wasn't good enough. So I carried that for a long time. And then anytime I was trying to make progress, right, these horrible headaches, this horrible sinus pressure would come up. Um, all of these things, all of these symptoms would pop up. And then of course there was a point in my time where cervical cancer developed in my body as well and it was related to all of these things that I was holding and what I recognized with the headaches and things it was like oh well there's this part of me that is terrified of like this massive backlash and me getting hurt again and I'd had evidence throughout my life of moments where I tried to really really push past that and had some really really big hurts and you're probably thinking like, well, if you push past it, like why, why did it happen? Because I hadn't actually resolved what was going on here. I hadn't actually done the work to help this part of me heal and to feel safe and to feel supported and loved. I was just trying to steamroll ahead and get where I wanted to be. And it didn't work anyway. But, you know, when you try to force yourself forward without actually gently checking in and figuring out hey, what's here? What's going on? Um, you know, things don't work out so well. And that was true for me. And I've seen it with my clients. I've seen clients that are building businesses and all of a sudden, like, gut issues that they haven't been dealing with for a little while pop right back up and then they're down for the count and they can't do anything that they plan to do. And it's because of this. I've seen clients like again, like those those body issues that are necessitating action come up and it's causing a lot of harm to them. 
And yet, when we take the time to figure out, okay, what are what is trying to be protected here? What is going on? What is attached to this? And how do I need to help myself move through this? How do I need to support this part of me to feel safe? Again, that's where the relief happens. I've experienced that. I've seen clients experience that. And this is where I want to get into a little bit of a personal story. Um, Not my story, but my dad's. So if you've been listening for any length of time, or you're following me on social media elsewhere, you may know that for the last, um, now 18 months, my dad has gone through colon cancer treatment. Um, He was diagnosed and early last year, um, or well, no, before that. But (laughs) it's like 18 months. What does that look like? Um, Yeah, er early, early last year. And um, it's been really hard on him. He just went through an ileostomy bag reversal a couple weeks ago. And the surgery went great. But um, within just two days of surgery, he got a block. Um, So for those of you that are not familiar with what that is, an ileostomy bag is where they reroute the intestine to release bowels through there instead of going through your normal system because they're removing a section of the intestine that is holding the cancer to hopefully prevent it from ever coming back. Well, that's what they did. And then there is a period of time where you use the ileostomy bag and then you get that reversed, hopefully, which is what happened for him. But obviously, for that length of time that he had the bag, his his bowels were not operating the way they normally would. His intestines were not running the way they normally would. So it, there's, you know, there's that period of time where the body's trying to learn how to do what it's done since birth all over again. And sometimes what can happen is a block where um, things will not pass through and it can cause some really, really life-threatening issues. Um, I got my dad to the emergency room. It was extremely scary. And he was in the hospital for a week. Um, And for about six days, he had to have a tube down his nose connecting to his stomach to help drain all the bile, all the, you know, everything that was trying to pass through his bowels but could not. And it was heartbreaking to watch him go through this. I mean, it's... One, like the whole process of going through the ileostomy bag and everything, it's completely embarrassing and dehumanizing. But then to watch him go through all of that and like feel like he was finally done and then be right back in there and all day long, every day, just have this tube down your nose, trying to fix things so that they could hopefully avoid having to do surgery because that was going to be what happened. Um, And there was a pretty profound moment literally hours before they were supposed to do surgery because again it'd been a week nothing was working um or you know things were not getting any better things were not improving so they were going to do that at the start of his treatment um we had had some conversations because again like he knows the work that i do and he he's he's done a lot of work on himself and he recognized like There were things that he was still holding on to that were hurting him and affecting him. And they they had affected him so much and had been so unresolved that they affected his health. And we had one conversation where he brought up that when he was six years old, because my dad has always had this habit of not really asking for help, not really asking for support and holding on to everything himself, like doesn't open up much he does not um, share with people things except he had with my grandmother when my grandmother was alive Um, and he always feels like a burden and it's affected his ability to have the career success he wanted it's affected his ability to have the relationships and the life that he wanted what he's been able to accomplish and it's been really hard to watch that Um, and if you've ever been been that person that's watched somebody like that feels so stuck and you know what's wrong but like it's not your journey to take and you cannot make them deal with these things it's very very challenging for me that's been extremely challenging because 
this is what I do for a living. It's what I help people with, and I've been there. But you can't, you cannot make somebody take a journey that they need to take at their own pace. So we had this conversation about a time when he was six and he remembers my grandparents arguing about money. He was the third child, immigrant. Um, they had been through the war and everything like that, World War II, and there was a lot of scarcity there. And because he was the third child, he just kind of developed this belief that he was the burden, right? Because everything, of course, had to have cost more because he was there. Um, and it's not like my grandparents tried to put that on him or anything. This is this is the argument that he heard um, about money, and it developed a belief for him. So we had had some talks about that, and while he was going through one of his first rounds of chemo, I had told him, I really think um, it would be good for you to do some conversations with that. And I taught him some of the exercises that I teach with my own clients and it was really um really really helpful like along with his chemo he started noticing things improve like when he went in for his own checkups and such he noticed that um his his levels were going down the cancer was shrinking it was pretty amazing and then it came back which is where the surgery came in and when he was in the hospital, I, again, I just instinctively knew because this is my job, this is what I do for a living, but I knew this was here. I knew this was a problem. And I was trying to think of a way to, to bring this up because I just, everything in me was just screaming like, this has to be dealt with. If this is not dealt with, I feel like this block is not going to clear. And, you know... As this is going on, right, I'm, I'm trying to deal with my own fears and feelings because I'm terrified that I'm going to lose my dad. You know, this could turn septic very quickly. And I'm trying to hold my child through it because, you know, even though my kid is 22, this is the only father figure that my, my daughter has ever known. And they have a very, very special bond. And they're terrified. I'm terrified. My dad's terrified, right? But instinctively, I just know this is related to this inner child. I mean, there's a block, right? He's holding, he's physically holding on to things. So about two days in, I suggested, I was like, I feel like you need to have a conversation with this part of yourself. And, you know, he was like, I can't, I can't do that right now. I'm, I'm trying to like... I'm barely, you know, getting through what, what I'm going through all day. And I was like, I understand. But I was like, if at some point it feels possible for you, just have a conversation. Maybe even just to let him know you're here and it's safe to let go, right? And you don't have to go super far into it because, again, some of this work, it can feel really daunting. And... You know, I left it at that because this is my dad's journey and he needs to deal with it. And he was going through so much, so I didn't want to pressure him and make him feel burdened with anything because, again, like, he's terrified right now. And what he needed to focus on was getting better. Um, a couple days later, though, is when he tried it. And, again, this was this was at the end of the week of him being there. He was scheduled for surgery in the morning, like first thing in the morning, and this was late, late in the night slash early, early morning, right? Depending on how you look at things. And he was lying in the bed because he was not able to sleep with this tube down his nose. I think he was just getting a little 15 minute burst all week. Um, he said he closed his eyes and he told this little inner boy, this little six year old version of him, it's okay. You're safe. You can let go. Everything's going to be okay. You can let go now, right? And he said almost instantly. He had to he had to call the nurses, get up, run to the bathroom because he was all hooked up with everything. Um, and for the next, like, hour and a half, like, not to be gross, but he was physically releasing everything. That block was moving. 
and they they brought in after a couple hours they brought in an x-ray machine and sure enough the block was gone and they didn't end up needing to do surgery just doing this I mean one it saved my dad out of having to go through a surgery which I knew he was worried about like how much this was going to cost because if you're in the US you know even in, with insurance sometimes our healthcare system is shit <laughs> um, and he was also you know I mean like that's another surgery so close together it was just within days like this is really dangerous his body's holding all this um, it saved his life and this is where you know I always tell people when I do this work with them and that they do have illness or, or injuries or whatever they're going dealing with their with their body yes this can absolutely impact it how that impacts it I don't know should you um, stop doing any other treatment for it absolutely not right I am you know like my dad like if I would have told him at the start of this like oh don't don't do chemo right just do this um, I don't know that I would have a father at this point but this is where the holistic side of healing can really play in because doing this in combination with everything else was super impactful and again having that moment because he hadn't done continuous work with this part of him and he hadn't given that part of him yet permission to to work through this and really let go it was still impacting him and yet doing this right just this simple exercise and I'm saying simple not like this is not huge emotionally but like it literally just went into a meditation to talk to this part of himself and to give that part of himself the permission to let go it saved his life um, at the very least it saved him from going through another surgery which would have been very very hard on him hard on his healing um, but it definitely saved his life so this is how impactful this work can be of just taking the time to look at your body and figure out okay what is this pain that I'm going through what is this illness that I'm going through attached to and what does it need? What can I do to help facilitate it, healing and letting go? And when you can do that, when you can figure that out, oh my God, it can be so life-changing. It can be absolutely life-changing. And it's necessary for some of us in order to be healing, right? Like, I don't know how well all of this would have worked out for my dad had he not done that like I mean he would have had the surgery but like he was holding on to a lot there emotionally so how well and how effective could the surgery have been I don't know so for those of you that have not been doing IFS work doing these parts work and checking in with that connection to your mind body I hope this inspires you to start looking at what could these illnesses these medical conditions these injuries these things like that can they be attached to and what needs to be done to resolve them that's stuff that I do with my clients all the time so of course you can reach out to me for support in that um, if you're actually in the Columbus area I have an upcoming workshop where I'm gonna teach you some basics of doing this in a really really fun and nourishing movement based way like a sensual movement and somatic experiencing way with some witchy practices because like that's my jam um, I'm going to be doing that in a workshop on November 10th called the cleansing and protecting your energy workshop and you can check that out I'm also launching for those of you that are in business a um, monthly membership $44 a month called the embodied business coven for business owners and we're gonna do some of this work together to actually make it possible for you to one build the business and to keep going to let yourself be visible to let yourself take the opportunities you want to take to have the success you want to take um, that will be starting on November 7th and it's gonna be 44 bucks a month we'll have two calls a month so it's gonna be a lot of fun and we're gonna go through some coaching and some guided work by me you'll have a place to 
get support, share, network. It's going to be amazing. It's basically everything I wanted when I had a business and probably would have saved me from making some really bad decisions and also going through some of my own physical traumas and injuries and illnesses as well. Um, but again, I hope at the very least this inspires you to start taking a look at what's going on within your body. And if you want support, whether that be group or one-on-one -on -one based, please reach out to me. I take clients all over the country and Europe and actually all over the world. I have clients all over the world, which is pretty amazing. Um, if you have noticed something coming up, even just in this conversation, if you have done some work around noticing, you know, body issues along with this work, I would love to hear your experiences. I want to hear from you, know what's working for you, what hasn't. Um, if you have questions, let me know those. You can comment on this. Um, share this with somebody too that you feel like could really, really use this. Make sure you're subscribed, leave me a review, all the good stuff. But again, I hope this really inspires you to look at that connection and see what you can do to help yourself heal, not just physically, but also emotionally so that you can have the success that you want in every area of your life because you deserve it. You truly do. And when we give these little parts the permission to let go and show them that they're enough and they're loved and it's safe, your whole life can truly change. Trust me. I've seen it. I've experienced it personally, professionally. It's truly amazing. So hope that inspires you.